Steve Warrenberg. I'm a research fellow here at International Flavors and Fragrances. I've been here for about 21 years and uh, I head up the group called Consumer Science which studies the uh, benefits of flavors and fragrances that go beyond uh, the simple evaluation that consumers might give. Savings reminds me of the fourth grade. Uh, it reminds me of the first day of school. Um, school. Great school. Uh, being in the first grade, sitting next to Justin Denon. Because usually I really don't like writing, so usually when I'm using my pencil, it, I get really bored. When I was in fourth grade, I had a really pretty teacher, and she used to pick a pencil monitor. Playing with pencils like we were Star Wars characters, and they were lightsabers. It sort of makes me tired when I speak. Getting up and crossing the crossing the classroom and not feeling comfortable with myself as a young girl. So every day, all the all the boys used to raise their hands to be pencil monitor, so they could go up and sharpen the pencils and hang out with Mrs. Velastro. When my teacher caught us playing with them like they were swords, uh, I got stabbed in the hand, and I did not like crossing the room and. I did not, oh, I always tried to be prepared with a nice sharp pencil. And she took me to the bathroom to wash it out, and my hand smelled like a pencil for a really long time. That reminds me of the fair in my hometown. Uh, in July, there was the Saint, Saint John, and uh, they had a big fair in the park. In the sixth grade, me and my friend Dan Mallon went to uh, the park. Clove Lake Park from Staten Island, and um, they had like a little carnival going that day. It was at one of my school carnivals, and my mom bought me cotton candy, and I was like, yes! And uh, we used to go and have uh, cotton candy and ride the rides, and it was a lot of fun. We went through a sprinkler, and um, when we went to go get cotton candy, which was probably the dumbest move ever on my part, um, he took the cotton candy and he just threw it at me. And then I ate it, and then after I pulled it from away from my mouth, it got all over my face. So then I couldn't get it off, and then I had to wash it off. I had cotton candy all over me, stuck in my hair, all over my face, my body. I had to get a haircut, and I smelled like cotton candy until I got home. It was pretty bad. It was good though. The thought behind why smell is remembered longer than other uh, sensory modalities is that uh, there are fewer things to interfere with the smells once remembered compared to, say, sights and sounds. When I was in college, I used to work as a bank teller. Me and my mom, I had to tag along with her everywhere, so we went to the bank. On TV, they would always like smell money. Working at a bingo, when you know, you do the bingo at Holy Family, and count all the money, and ugh, I couldn't stand it. It was gross. And she had to take out money and fill out some paperwork, so she took out the money first. For some reason or another, it was all in pens. Money has a very distinct smell. And I used to work in this neighborhood, actually, it was a poor neighborhood, and people used to come in with rubber bands of money, but it stunk. They used to bury it in their back. I don't know what they did with it. And like, I don't know, I always wanted to try that. So I tried it, but it kind of didn't really smell like anything. She was trying to teach me how to handle money. So she let me hold on to the money while she filled out the paperwork. But it stunk to high heaven. And, um, we wouldn't even touch it. And then there were certain people that when they came to the teller window with the stinky money, we actually had a bottle of uh, aerosol that we would spray at the people because it stunk so much. So I went to the bathroom and put water all over my arms and my neck and some of my face and my forehead and um, I just decided to smack the money on there. Actually a customer came in one time and 
they handed me this stinky money and I actually took the bottle of aerosol and I sprayed it at the window. Then when I walked out of the bathroom, I screamed, I'm the money monster. The guy went to the branch manager and I got fired. Back at home, uh, I used to have a friend I work in a gas station. Uh, I remember one time, we were coming home from my cousin's wedding and uh, my wife and I, we, we ran out of gas. I used to love when my mom would pull into like gas stations. Probably going to my grandmother's on a Sunday. We're all piled in the car, stopping for gas. So I had to actually run to a gas station. It was raining that night too. And uh, the car was, actually had a truck and it was stuck in the middle of the road. So I ran to the gas station. And uh, he was always smoking. And uh, the funny thing is that I was asking, how can you be smoking with uh, all this gas around? And I would like smell the gasoline, and I always like the smell of gasoline, I don't know why. Love the smell, always sticking my head out the window to get a good whiff of things. <laughs> and um, he proved to me that uh, although it was dangerous, that uh, he could be smoking because uh, he put some gasoline in the cup, and uh, he put the cigarette into the cup, and the uh, cigarette just went off. Running back with the can of gas, I spilled it all over my tuxedo. It's still is dangerous to be smoking a gas station. Are some odors pleasant and others unpleasant because you're hardwired to, to react that way? Or do you learn those associations of pleasantness and unpleasantness? Uh, so that, for instance, do kids in infancy naturally find certain odors to be pleasant or unpleasant, or do they learn that as they go on? The answer seems to be very clearly that they learn it, and that's not a hardwired association. Um, although it's not uh, totally clear, the reason that it seems to be that they learn it is uh, when you test infants with uh, odors that adults find either very pleasant or unpleasant. Uh, infants uh, have a not a strong reaction to uh, those odors. So things that might disgust a person like rotten food uh, do not pervert, uh, uh, provoke disgust universally in infants and very pleasant smells don't automatically uh, make them uh, have a pleasant response. When I get home from a baseball practice, springtime, we're playing two-hand touch uh, at the school. Cut grass, when they cut the grass at the house. I have football practice, and I used to come home, and um, all my family, like, they usually, they were usually eating dinner. And I go for a ball, and it gets all in all over me. Uh, after a good rain, it always smells the best. I have terrible allergies, so it does affect me. It brings back good memories when I was a kid playing baseball and now when I'm on the field with my kids playing ball. And we're running down the grassy knoll and um, there are cones to set up the end zone. And as we're running at really like a ridiculous fast pace, he flies in the end zone scoring the touchdown. And they used to be like, Michael, what is that smell? And so I used to have to take off my cleats, run upstairs, and then go get changed just to eat dinner. And me and my anger slaps the cone, which like fumbles up into my leg and makes me flip like 10 feet into the air, where I land crashing onto my head into a bunch of muddy grass. My eyes close and my nose closes and you know, all that good stuff. It was disgusting and it smelled like grass. The chocolate reminds me of when I went to Hershey Park for Valentine's Day. My friend was addicted to chocolate. He ate chocolate more than I breathed air. Pretty much a chocoholic. It always reminds me of Easter. I'm not a big fan of chocolate. It always smells really good, but um, I just don't care for it. I was in the factory and they had like all the chocolate surrounding me. And it's a really good smell. I probably eat it more than I should. Um, it's actually my favorite snack, my favorite candy. 
in any shape, form, color, it doesn't matter. When I was a little kid, we used to sneak our little, uh, the chocolate balls in our pocketbooks to church and, uh, you know, make a mess on our Easter clothes. He literally brought, like, a big Ziploc bag full of chocolate to field day on a hot summer day. Big chocolate bunny every year. Um, and it was so huge. Um, and it used to sit in the house, and the whole house smelled for chocolate for weeks. It just like comes to my mind on Valentine's Day because people get people with chocolate. And we did justice. We ate. We ate it every day, morning, uh, noon, and night. I ended up running straight to the table, and on the table was the bag of melted chocolate, which is literally like a bag of liquid chocolate. And when I crashed into it, I landed right on the bag, and it went all over me. People have a sense that odors uh, are remembered, uh, or the memories that are evoked by odors are, are remembered accurately, but in fact, what research has shown is that odors are not more accurately remembered. Odor evoked memories aren't more accurately remembered, but rather they are more emotional, and the emotion of the memory gives people a sense that it's an accurate memory, and that may actually be a misperception. Cigarettes always remind me of like my really manly uncle. Everyone in my family used to basically smoke. When we would go to family birthdays. My mom, uh, she smoked as a, when I was growing up, and uh, you would smell it on your clothes, you'd smell it in the house. Yeah, so I really don't like the smell. I used to smoke, and I smoke uh, for a long time. Personally, I just hate cigarette smoke, <laughs> um, although I used to smoke. Um, like, he's like really strong and like he beat up four garbage men once. My cousin Nelson would always be smoking a cigar and I always had to like sit next to him or something. I know plenty of people who've had cancer and you know actually died from smoking so it's just not a good thing. And we used to smoke a lot. I used to smoke like two packs. She's 75 now and I think she quit like four or five years ago so. I don't know, whenever I smell like cigarettes I always just imagine him like smoking cigarettes on the porch, because he used to do that on my porch a lot. Good thing is that uh, eventually I end up quitting and I'm no longer a smoker. Now it kind of bothers me. Tires. My father was in the tire business and uh, he always came home smelling of rubber. When I was a teenager, um, we used to go to car racings in this town. Uh, north of my city. Rubber reminds me of when I was in a car accident with my parents when I was little. I guess when I was a kid, you know, uh, guys drag racing, racing on a street corner, you would smell the rubber after it was burning. Uh, during the weekend, they used to have car racing in there, and uh, we used to go on Friday night before the races, and uh, with our mini cars, we'd go and burn some rubber. And then my brothers were in the business, and, that, and then my husband was in the business. And, uh, like I smelled all the burning rubber and, and everything because it got rear-ended. I grew up smelling rubber. And then uh, run away from the police and situations like that. It was fun and dangerous. I do believe that odors have a particularly strong connection to memory and emotions. And it's because of their intimate connection in the brain and because of research that's been done that has compared uh, odors to other sensory modalities in how emotional the memories are that are brought back by those different stimuli. And it seems pretty clear that uh, the memories brought back by odors as opposed to other sensory modalities like uh, sights or sounds or touch of the same objects uh, do have a more emotional quality and a more uh, sort of vivid or brought back quality to the memories that are evoked compared to sights and sounds and touch.